Guys, a lot of people want vehicle to grid. It makes sense. Most vehicle batteries are between the size of 50 kilowatt hours to up to 120. That is, the, that is the equivalent to between four to nine Tesla Powerwall batteries. It's actually cheaper to buy an electric car simply to power your house than it would be to buy Tesla Powerwall batteries. But it's a bit more complicated than that because you do need inverters, you do need other things that the Powerwall has. Anyhow, a lot of people are buying used, broken, smashed EVs and then repurposing the batteries at their home for basically massive battery packs. And unfortunately, at this point in time, there's not really any cars you'd actually want to buy that have vehicle to grid. Vehicle to grid doesn't really exist yet. Tesla said it would be in their cars in 2025. Will the new Model Y have vehicle to grid? Well, hell yes, 100% guaranteed because the existing Tesla Model Y has vehicle to grid. If you bought a Tesla Model Y within the last year, it almost certainly has vehicle to grid. It just hasn't been turned on. Seriously. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. This is a story that it's not a new story. It's been around for a little while, a couple of months we've known this, but most people don't seem to be aware of this. I still keep getting emails all the time about vehicle to grid. When will it come out? Now, of course, Tesla still is the global leader when it comes to electric car sales. Yes, BYD sell a lot of cars. They sell more than Tesla, but BYD's growth has been all plug-in hybrids. They've only grown by 2% in terms of EV sales this year. 2%, their plug-in hybrids are grown 80%. So the truth is that actually, Tesla's still selling more EVs. That means that uh, if you buy a Tesla car, it matters whether or not you have vehicle to grid. This is, this is, a, this is a, a game changer for you and for the grid, for the country, for the world. It's such important technology. You have to power your entire house by using simply your EV. Now, the thing is, Tesla's cars do not have the necessary inverter for vehicle to grid to work. For vehicle to grid to work with a Tesla car, you need the inverter that is in the power wall. So really, even if Tesla was to turn this feature on tomorrow, you would still need to have a Tesla Powerwall or potentially another inverter from another brand. But with a Tesla Powerwall, it works seamlessly. And how do we know this? How do we know this is true? Well, we know this is true because it's been tested. Now, technically, Tesla confirmed that bi-directional charging, as in not just vehicle to load, where you can power some things, but full vehicle to grid would come next year. Now, Musk said it's inconvenient for some reason, not sure what he meant, extremely inconvenient. Maybe he means, you know, you're gonna be driving a car during the day, so what's the point? I don't actually agree with that. I think a lot of households have a second car, one car, and a lot of people work from home. So very, very common that you have your cars parked at home. So I don't think it's actually inconvenient. Now, Tesla's bi-directional charging was successfully trialed on the 6th of August, as in about a month ago, this year, 2024. Arn B-Box GmbH has showcased the bi-directional charging vehicle to grid and vehicle to home capability of the Tesla Model Y. In a trial, they discharged a Tesla Model Y that was paired with a stationary battery. Now, this time they actually discharged a Tesla Model Y using an Arm B-Box DC bi-directional charger at 10 kilowatt. Now that's double the power output of a Tesla Powerwall 2. Now the Tesla Powerwall 3 can put out about 11.5. But that means that in conjunction with the Powerwall 2, you can put out 10 kilowatt from the Model Y and send that to your house. And that's that's more than enough power for most households. Very few households would use that more than that, more than that amount of power per second, essentially. The application of bidirectional charging in this instance, instance comprises energy being discharged from the battery via an external bidirectional charger, which undertakes the conversion from DC to AC. This is known as DC bi-directional charging. This differs to vehicle to load where the conversion happens via the car's outboard charger. This is known as AC bi-directional charging. Now AC, of course, is generally limited when it comes to bi-directional charging. The CEO of the company said that Tesla could and probably will soon make its vehicles available to the energy market, meaning they can be used on the grid essentially. He speculated, rumor has it that the Powerwall 3 can be upgraded to discharge existing Tesla vehicles. So he believes that the whole point of the Powerwall 3 having 11.5 kilowatt generation was to be able to handle the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3's ability to send power to it at about that particular number. Makes sense, right? The, the numbers match up. So what actually happened here? Well, apparently 
This test was actually done as well on a three-year-old Model 3. So Tesla's had vehicles have had vehicle to grid for quite a while. You're probably thinking, how do I use this? How do I get this to work? Well, technically, you're not meant to at this point in time until Tesla actually makes this feature work. Now, apparently, the actual charging port is under the driver's seat. And so they had to actually get in there and find it. And it's not really in a position where you can easily get to it. Now, I don't know if Tesla can potentially turn this on somehow and, and make it possible to, to use this in some other way. Or if Tesla just put this feature in the cars to make it potential in the future that you could buy a special device from them to upgrade your car to use vehicle to grid. Either way though, this does confirm what people have speculated on that Tesla vehicles, both the Model Y and the Model 3, are capable of this feature, even if it appears to be possibly difficult to activate in your Tesla. So the question here remains, is this legal in Australia? Well, vehicle to home and vehicle to grid in South Australia, that is the first place here in Australia that has legalized it and made it actually possible. The only bi-directional charger approved to be used in bi-directional mode is the Warbox Kisa, which needs to be connected to a Nissan Leaf to activate the bi-directional charging feature. Now, the Nissan Leaf is the only car that can do bi-directional charging, but the Nissan Leaf is not a particularly great EV, so I don't think you'd want to buy it just for that feature alone. No other states here in Australia have permitted the connection of bi-directional chargers in their network. Now, the question is, would the government even know you're doing it? No, only if there was a fire. If there's a fire in your home, then you might not be covered by insurance. That's really gonna be the only issue you're gonna see here. There's no way that they could actually find out if you did use vehicle to grid. It should be noted the Warbox Keysar needs to be connected to a Nissan Leaf, which uses a Chade Mo plug. And this plug does not feature in any new electric cars in the future here in Australia. Now, in Australia, the dominant charging plug is CCS. This is yet to feature in EV form with either vehicle to home or vehicle to grid. So will this feature be available in future? Absolutely, it will. The, the Australian government, the American government, basically most Western countries are very well aware that EVs can solve grid problems, not actually become a burden to them, as long as vehicle to grid is possible. There's many manufacturers planning on being, bringing vehicle to grid to their cars at this point in time. The Nissan Leaf here in Australia is pretty much the only car you can get that has that feature. But the question is, I mean, do you want to buy that car? Do you think the Nissan Leaf battery is going to last a long time? It's not particularly well known for its great um, battery longevity. It's it's its battery degradation isn't real isn't real good. Essentially, the battery management system, if it exists in your Nissan Leaf, um, older ones didn't have it, so they don't last very long. Those batteries. Newer ones, I believe, do have it, but it's still not that good. In the future, though, I do think Tesla will turn this feature on. I think likely you'll have to pay Tesla a fee and they'll be able to fit the connector cable to you know, basically get that activated for you. I think this will come to, to the market. I do think it will come. Tesla have confirmed it'll be in their new vehicles next year, but let's wait and see. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching.